Now, a few years ago, I made a video showing how to enlarge a hole saw hole uh, that you'd already made or inherited um, using three different methods. And if you're interested in those videos, uh, they'll be top of screen at the moment. Now, today I'm going to discuss a fourth method. The method I'm going to show you today also doesn't require you to have the original hole saw uh, that made the hole in the first place. And so that's quite an advantage. So the problem that we have when you're trying to enlarge a hole saw hole is you've got this pilot drill bit in the center there that centralizes and guides your hole saw as you're going through the material. Uh, just to show you a close up, this drill bit in the center here is for locating your center and drilling a pilot hole, which will then guide the cutting edge uh, as it goes through the material and keep it from wobbling from side to side and messing up your work. If you look from the side, you'll notice that the drill bit is slightly ahead of the cutting teeth of your hole saw. So that goes in first, uh, centralizes and stabilizes the cutting edge as it goes through the material. Otherwise what happens is it jumps around a bit and makes a very messy hole. So let's get on with it. I'll just show you how this method works. Now the first thing we have to do is cut a template out of a scrap piece of material. So we'll do that first. And we've got to use the new hole saw that we're trying to drill with and just drill a nice neat hole. And this is going to act as a guide for our new hole saw. Now the next thing we have to do is try and position it centrally over the old hole so that we get the old hole and the new hole in the right place. Now you can eyeball it pretty accurately like that, but if you're a bit worried, what you can do is just get a ruler and just find out more or less where the widest point on the old hole is, that's about there. And then draw a line straight across like that. And then do it again at 90 degrees, more or less there. Draw another line. And then you work out the difference between the two holes in diameter. Now I know the big hole is 73 and the small hole is 35. So we take one from the other, that gives us 38. So theoretically, um, if you divide 38 by two, you get 19. So theoretically, uh, the second hole should be 19 mils from the edge of the first hole in all four directions. Um, but what I, what I would normally do is just make it a bit smaller because if you make it too wide, then when you put this over, you've blocked out your mark. So even if we made it about 15, that would work. So I've set some calipers at 15 and then we just do put our caliper there, make a mark, caliper there, make a mark, there. Like that and that should give us a pretty central situation you'll just have to estimate the little gap between the marks I reckon that's about right and then we'll just need to clamp everything together um, if you're in a situation where you can't clamp you could screw the one onto the other or you could even use double-sided tape if you don't want to damage the surface of that one just stick it on take tape off and clean it up afterwards uh, but we're just working in a workshop with some scrap plasterboard so it's not too critical let's put another clamp on that side then we take our new drill using our template as a guide Slip it in until it's touching there. Now we know it's more or less central. And there we go. 
So if we take our clamps off, And this is our template, and that's our new hole. It's very neat, and uh, it's pretty central as well. Now, if you take a look at the offcut, you can see it's pretty central, the new hole that we've drilled. So that all works pretty well. Now, if you found this useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. Just scroll right down to the bottom, and you'll find the comment section there. Thank you very much for watching.